On November 20th, 2018, I was walking outside with my 60-year-old uncle. He was describing to me how he had recently met a 19-year-old who identifies as queer. What does it mean for someone to identify with the word queer? He asked me. He admitted that it was hard for him to keep up with all the changes that have occurred recently regarding gender and sexuality. What does it mean to use they them pronouns? My uncle wondered. Throughout this conversation, I realized that he may not be alone in being unaware of the current language and understanding surrounding gender and sexuality. I could sense that my uncle was curious about LGBTQ plus issues, but had not had much exposure to them throughout his life. Many of my peers, myself included, identify as queer and or non-binary. Here, I take a snapshot of us, students at Pitzer College, talking about what queerness means to members of our generation. For those who struggle to understand what it means to live in fluidity, I hope our stories will connect with you. This film is for you. I am Amber Jane Burkhart. My pronouns are they, their, them. And in terms of how I identify, queer is a pretty good descriptor. My name is Elise Enlick. Um, I use she, her, hers. And I identify as lesbian and gender non-conforming, you know, non-binary. My name is Danny Burke. I identify as gay and my pronouns are he and they. My name is Libby Smith. I am the director and producer of this film. I am a student at Bitzer College. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I identify as queer. I would say I'm gender queer or non-binary in that like I don't feel like a girl or a woman, and I don't feel like just a boy or a man. There were various instances when I was growing up where I specifically felt like I wasn't a girl, like compared to other girls, and I felt really like deeply ashamed of that, like this deep self-consciousness or like feeling of me being like gross. Um, and what I attached it to is feeling like my dad. Like a lot of times I would feel like the only way I could like formulate it is I felt kind of like my dad. <laughs> um, like I remember at soccer, I wasn't doing anything like in particular. It was soccer practice. I was talking to someone um, who was like another teammate of mine and she was just like a pretty like feminine girl and I just like was struck with this moment of like feeling like really like mannish and masculine and like or just I more I more so was struck with like realizing that that's how I felt um, and I felt really like uncomfortable and self-conscious about it and like to this day I still like I'm learning how to just feel comfortable around women, feel comfortable around men, and like comfortable as who I am. It was one of those things again where it just never felt right. Like, you know, I think I've always been the same way. I think I've never been cisgender in the way that I've never been straight. When I was a kid, I was not a very feminine kid, um, and I always loved putting on boys' clothes. Um, I hated wearing dresses, and you know, continued into puberty. You know, I remember one time I like wore a dress to a bat mitzvah, and I like turned to my parents and I was like, "This is the last time I will ever wear a dress. I'm sick of this. It feels so wrong." Um, and they were like, "Okay." And so then they, you know, got me some suits, um, and and that's what I did for a while. It's. I think, you know, for me, it's not just my sexuality. It, it's it's everything about me and my life. I'm a very queer person, you know? Mm -hmm. 
the way that I dress, the way that I act. I'm not within societal norms. Um, mm-hmm. And that I think that that lets me be very authentic with people. I think that lets me have very close relationships with a lot of people. Um, I think that lets me be very creative and you know, flexible with how I decide to structure my life with what I think that I'm allowed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote an email to my mom you know, and I still have it, um, and I actually, sometimes I read it to her again, um, I read it to people before, it's very cute, because I was, like, a kid, and so I was just saying, like, I think that I might be lesbian, um, and, uh, and she, she, she responded to me, and she said, like, you know, I love you, um, you know, this is something I want to, like, talk about, like, we can continue to talk about this, but I want to do it, like, at your pace, you know, you don't have to worry about me, like, thinking that you're too much to handle. And when it came out that I was gay in high school, my car got tagged, Burke's a fag. The gym in the basketball gym got tagged, Burke's a fag. And literally overnight, I went from the high school jock, the most, one of the most popular kids on campus, to the one of the most outcasted kids on campus. But, so what I learned really fast was how society viewed me, uh, what it meant to not just walk out the door as a black man, but walk out the door as a black gay man. When this happened, it was pretty devastating for me. Um, you know, it showed me how people viewed me and that made me feel like that's how I needed to view myself. Uh, I didn't talk about it because I was ashamed of it. I was ashamed of it happening. I was ashamed of myself for it, me being gay, even though in a sense people didn't know. It was just a random rumor that it got spread. Um, and it hurt. And me not sharing it really destructed me. You know, I held it in. I Even though I knew my mom accepted me for it, again, I was just ashamed of having to go through this. I was ashamed of being that way. I was ashamed of losing all of my friends. I really found freedom in my sexuality and my identity as a whole coming to Pitzer. I realized... Um, in the moment when I brought my mom on campus to do a tour as I'd already got accepted, but she was so proud. She wanted to to see the campus and she wanted to kind of, you know, pat me on the back a little bit. And when we got into admissions, there was a rainbow flag and, and we had already kind of walked around uh, the campuses a little bit and she saw some of the artwork and she was just really impressed. And she turned and looked at me and said, you're going to be free here. You're really going to be able to be free. And it was sort of at that moment, I was already excited and I knew I wanted to come to Pitzer, but it was really at that moment, I was just like, I'm gonna get to experience this. Like, and this was a part of my life where I'd put in the work, I had really worked hard to get here, but I'd also, and when I say here, I don't just mean at Pitzer, I mean like, into this acceptance of myself. And this was a place where I was going to get to apply that acceptance. And just from the atmosphere, from the people, um, and from my mom's affirmation um, in me trusting her, I knew that this was going to be that experience. For our generation, queerness means questioning what is increasingly, like within our bodies, um, as well as within the world around us. Um, And you can imagine different ways of being um, that might not be present in these like narrow boundaries that we are kind of like forced into. Queer and queer relationships, whatever that may look like for whoever, is so much more acceptable now. Um, 
But I still think that there's a long way to go even for the younger generation as they still have to come out. Um, coming out still a scary thing. While working on this project and listening to the stories of my friends and peers, I have come to understand that as time progresses, the labels people use to describe their gender and sexuality will also evolve. Past generations more often used binary identifying language like gay or straight and male or female. Today, the identifying language we use has shifted and expanded to include terms like queer and non-binary, and it will only continue to develop. To be queer is to inhabit a space that is not yet here, a space that is bound to shift over time. I hope that we can move towards a future where none of us face criticism for resisting normative categories of gender and sexuality. I hope that one day, we will all be able to freely express and reinvent ourselves in whatever way we choose. I also want to acknowledge all that older generations have done for paving the way for LGBTQ rights and access. This film builds on that legacy. In the end, I hope that we can listen to and learn from each other.